I don't know why I didn't say yeah. Going to the grocery store like third time this week because <laughs> I'm cooking a lot and I don't know that many recipes that are healthy enough. But today I went back to that townhouse where the client was trying to is going to Airbnb her new construction townhouse. Uh, and we finished up some curtain brackets, hung up some pictures this morning. Not even crazy early where like there's no cars or anything. People are going to work already. But it's like there's no traffic traffic so that all the cars are zooming by. So like I walked Sugar in the morning a little bit farther um, because I didn't have time to take him to the park from my relative's house. So we ended up on the main street a little bit just to make that loop. And then, uh, so there's obviously a sidewalk, but you know, um, it's a little bit earlier. So not a lot of people were walking on the street. And this guy with all his windows rolled down pulls over so fast, like straight at us. And I was like, oh my God, he's gonna hit us. So I, um, like kind of made sure we were closer to the mountain side uh, rather than the road side and then uh, he was actually pulling over to uh, I don't know what his intentions were either try to pick us up or holler or I don't know ask for directions but regardless like cannot pull over in front of a, a woman and expect that she's going to respond when he pulled over and he started talking to us he's like excuse me excuse me i walked out of there so fast like almost to the verge of running away from it and i was like oh my god because what if there are so many people in there you know like what if they try to abduct us jeez i don't know if people are out there gonna be like oh you know what if he was just trying to ask for direction it's like this is a civilized area go freaking stop at a store and ask for direction if that's the case but you cannot pull over on the side of the street right in front of somebody by the sidewalk and try to holler at them with nobody around like that is fear red flag all of my all my red flags were going up and I was like, oh my God, we gotta get the fuck out of here. So I ended up making a left right up, going up uh, the hill and uh, rushed back home. But that was so scary. Shrimp, basil with tomato and cucumber. Concoction. Quinoa omelet from leftover quinoa from yesterday. Ricotta because I need some cheese and I need to finish this before we leave. And what else? Oh, enchilada sauce. Do I get to try one more time? I like to show myself that I'm just fine Left me floating alone The water's so cold Cut My loot from today I'm heading to the job right now but I woke up this morning and Sugar's face right under his left eye is swollen and yesterday like whenever i was like cuddling him or petting him or something and i squeezed that side of his face he, he would cry and i thought okay maybe he bit his tongue or he bit his cheek or something i don't know um now there's a bump and but when i touch the bump he doesn't cry or he doesn't seem like he's in any pain but he um, usually eats his food after the walk pretty excitedly. I'm here at the vets. We're back. I am tired. Before I went back home, I went to Wajimaya and got this okonomiyaki and spam with sabi. Oh, and a shrimp salad, but that's in the fridge. But anyway, so the vet visit turned out fine. Um, the swelling went down already without doing anything. So rule of thumb, if anything happens to sugar, I need to wait at least 24 hours before I start looking up things and it's like they give you the worst case scenario stuff. They're like, oh, uh, it could be an abscess, that could be a tumor, it could be cancerous or non-cancerous. You have to take it to the vet. And I was like, <laughs> I was like super stressed out and I couldn't get wait to get out of there when I went to the job because I wanted to hurry up and prepare for the vet visit. Turned out fine. I ended up buying a uh, 
pain medication for discomfort, some other medication for anxiety, some other medication for antibiotics because because the swelling had gone down by the time I got to the vet. Like it had kind of moved up a little bit, but it could have also been because of his head collar and just kind of like. So uh, I purchased everything. The visit was almost $300, but totally fine. They basically confirmed what I've been thinking about this whole time about sugar. He needs dental work and to take out his uh, rotten teeth, but we'll see how uh, if he actually eats and everything, because that's what I was worried about because his, his appetite has been so low. It's a chilly day. And I'm finally putting away all the crap from yesterday. Hopefully I'll go to Home Depot today. Sugar update. He's fine. I think like the change in location kind of messes him up as far as appetite or something. I don't know because when we got back on Saturday, he didn't eat. And I was like, oh, his teeth probably still hurts after like the, the teeth or the tooth abscess thing that the vet said he probably had. And, you know, I got all those medications. I looked at the bill, by the way. It was only $218, not $281. Um, so not that bad. That bet is actually pretty affordable, especially with three medications. Now that he's eating and he's not in, he doesn't like show any pain whatsoever. <laughs> I am, um, yeah, I am so relieved. I was just like, oh my gosh, I have to get tons and tons of canned food because that's all he'll eat. I can't even get that to work. So yeah, he's fine. He came back home for just a little bit. I shouldn't have. But anyway, I went to Home Depot. I made like $80 of returns. I got more i got these like flat sheets of sandpaper because the drywall job where i painted it you can kind of see the where the ring of the mud ends even though i put texture so i just want to sand it some more since i have to go back to repaint it one more time because because the client had an uh, a binder that came with his house that said you know the code for the paint i think i talked about this but it was obviously not correct it said walls and trim were extra white Sherwin-Williams, blah, blah, blah. And he ordered that. But when I painted it, it was completely, it was super white compared to his current color, which was like kind of beige, yellowy. Anyway, he got the correct color by dropping off the sample. So I have to patch up what he took off the wall to get to use as a sample. And then I have to repaint what I've painted. And when he sent me that picture, even though the texture was there, you could see the ring where the mud ends. So I'm gonna sand it some more and then repaint it. So I got this. Um, and then I also got this one, a wider paintbrush because I don't know how long paintbrushes are supposed to last. I think they're supposed to last a really long time if you wash it. But I have this issue like, after the job is done, I'll be like, okay, do you mind if I just kind of rinse off my paintbrush a little bit, you know, because I got to go to the next job. And most of the time the clients will say, yeah, go ahead. Um, but I don't want to be like running their water forever. So I'll just like rinse it off a little bit. And then if I don't have time to go right home to wash it better, I feel I just don't have, you know, the paintbrush kind of dries up in the car. Uh, so that paintbrush is like, so not clean anymore. <laughs> so I bought this. I'm just trying to figure out like how to take better care of it so this one lasts longer. But we'll see. What do you guys do after the job? Do you like just run, just like let the water run forever and make sure this is completely clean before you leave? I just I I'm too ashamed to ask to do that. Same with the rollers. So I bought new rollers. see that you see those bright bright rays seeping through the blinds that is because it's gonna be a scorcher today yesterday was pretty overcast um a little bit of pockets of uh sun but mostly overcast and i already feel like my under boob stinks but I took off my work shirt because I don't work till one. My first job today was super easy. It was to install four, five smoke alarms and one carbon monoxide detector. And yeah, that was uh, about 
I don't know, 40 minutes, maybe 10 minutes of talking. Very easy. It was for a realtor that found my information on a Facebook group for my neighborhood, which is amazing because it's always amazing when I have clients that I've never worked with through TaskRabbit first. Like obviously it, it, there is the risk of like, oh, are they gonna pay me and whatever, but um, so far so good from that Facebook group. So very happy, sugar's happy, and yeah. For furniture assembly jobs, I usually grab one bag, one large white plastic bag, a uh, trash bag, uh, and I put it in my the side pocket of my tool bag because if I'm doing furniture assembly and I open up a box, uh, more than likely, if it's not IKEA, it's going to have plastic, like plastic wrapping or styrofoam. So I uh, separate that for the client and also for myself. That made me think like that in addition to like living here in Washington, I feel like people are way maybe that's not true because people are very eco-friendly in california too but anyway so when i live with my relatives for that one week shh, my relative is in her 70s well they're both in their 70s relatives but the wife is a lot more strict about recycling the husband not so much but he obviously uh recycles and um i was with him like making make, making sure he was okay uh, because the wife was out uh, out of town. So anyway, during that time, it was like, oh, well, she'll check the trash if you put things in the wrong place because, you know, food and waste will be in the green little compost, like, bucket that has, like, a lid on it, and that is lined with a compostable, like, a light green bag. And then there's a... She had, like, a plastic bag on the side, a big one, where she would put the recyclables. The plastic bag is not recyclable. But she would put it in there and then she would carry the bag and dump out the recycle like newspapers. I am not used to recycling and separating. Like when I lived in my apartment in LA, I the only things I would recycle were like Amazon boxes. So if there was like recyclable paper or plastic bottles or cans, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. From like beer, I dis I didn't recycle. <laughs> I want to get better at recycling. I want to make the effort. So, do you guys do that? <laughs> but yeah, my recycling is completely filled up before my trash trash bag. So I'm just trying to figure out an easy way for me to like continue to do it uh, without like being lazy. <laughs> I've taken a shower and I feel so much smoother. Hi. The second job of the day was supposed to be for Friday, but I moved it up to today because my early morning job was super quick, which is installing those smoke, smoke alarms and CO detectors. And then, so that was also easy. Coat racks from Ikea, one picture frame and a mirror, I think. And then my third job, which was at three through TaskRabbit, was at a house that was like right next to the water. And I, there was another house that I just worked for, like a big like mansion type of house that was having the same issue for the master, bath, master bedroom door, where I think maybe being super close to the water, even if your house is pretty new, the, sh the house shifts a lot more because the, the door jams were so not level. Saw these like plastic shims on both of the doors that I was trying to fix on the bottom hinge, just to push, kind of like try to make the door level. But yeah, I, there was just, there's just no way. Like you can't move it up too high because you're gonna hit the, hit the top 
head jam. Um, but yeah, one door, I was trying to move it up a little bit higher because I had a tiny bit of wiggle room because it was dragging on the carpet in the closet so much that it was so hard to open. And then the second one that was like on the tile in the bathroom, uh, it would still open and close without touching the tile, but it was obviously crooked and then it wasn't latching anymore because I guess he said he bought the house six years ago. I don't know when it was exactly built, but where the latch was now, I had to move the strike plate like, I don't know, a whole half an inch. Yeah. And I had to like carve out the strike, like the cross bore or the strike plate uh, hole. And yeah, it was a lot. I mean, it was, it was easy, but it was just, so much shifting you know what i mean like that seems so crazy to me that your house can shift that much in such a short amount of time well, actually i don't know how long but it's obviously a newer house but it's right by the water is that why i don't know but anyway i am going to try to close out this like vlog style because i hope to make one last task rabbit review video and i've made two already so i don't want to repeat myself and i don't want to like narrow it down to just about the app i want to also talk about like my business progress since being full-time um as a handywoman since october of 2019 and like going through the pandemic and moving states starting the clientele from new and all that stuff and like as far as my skills what i feel i learned i'm not good at and i don't want to get better at or things i have surprisingly gotten better at or whatever i kind of want to talk about that so i'm going to try to script that but i'm going to end today's video thank you so much for watching also i'm very very determined now that i bought a uh snorkel mask and the breathing tube to go swim in the Washington waters for the first for the first time ever. I really want to do it. My relative is like, there's seaweed, you can get caught and drown. I'm like, hmm. So he really does not want me to go by myself, but I have no, I do have friends, but I kind of want to go by myself and sugar. <laughs> so anyway, stay tuned for that. That might happen because uh, I think next week, Tuesday, it's supposed to be 89 degrees. Yeah, that's crazy. I definitely want to go swim. But anyway, ta-ta. I'll see you in my next video. Peace. Hey, what would you say? Hey, what would you